Hey guys, Nick from Ingram Audio, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you the best way to graph tune vocals using Melodyne to get natural sounding vocals that are still perfectly in pitch. So I have a song here, and I have seven vocal tracks on the song, and I want to tune all seven of these vocal tracks. This is just a song I wrote for video purposes. I recorded vocals on it. My wife, Leah, actually did some of the vocals as well and the screams. And then ChatGPT wrote all the lyrics. It was just a big family fun time. But yeah, so we created the song and now we're going to tune these lyrics or these vocals on it with Melodyne. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, let's take a listen to all these vocal layers real quick. Just see what everything sounds like with no tuning on any of the tracks. So yeah, let's make these sound better. I don't want to tune all seven of these tracks at the same time because that sounds not fun. It sounds like a headache. So I'm actually going to mute all of the other takes that I don't want to tune right now because all the other ones are just harmonies, layers. This is just the double and the triple of the main vocal. So I'm not going to tune these at the moment. I'm going to focus on just this main vocal. This is the main vocal of the part, the most important one. If we were to lose everything and keep one vocal, this would be it. So I'm going to tune this one first. What I don't want to do, I don't want to go to this track with where the vocal is, with all these plugins, and I don't want to throw Melodyne just on this track with all these plugins. It doesn't matter if I put them first or last in the chain. It's not what I want to do. It's going to cause some issues. It's going to cause weird issues when I go to like copy paste or edit things or do most things. So. I want to create a new track that I can graph tune the vocals in and then I can just export that vocal in place, bounce it in place, you know, commit the Melodyne to that vocal take. That way I can then throw it back onto these tracks, all these plugins and have no issues. So I'm going to start by creating my tuning track. Uh, we'll call it tuning. And then now this is my tuning track. This is where I'll do all of my vocal tuning for this course. So let's hear this vocal real quick. We're the ones who will rise up, up, up. I don't want to hear that. Okay, let's just start tuning it and make it sound good. I'm going to pull it up to my tuning track and I'm going to mute the song. And then let's throw on Melodyne. And I'm actually using Melodyne 4, but all the tools and techniques I'm doing are the same in Melodyne 5, so it shouldn't matter. Everything should still be the exact same as far as what I'm going to be showing you and the tools you're going to be using. So I'm going to open Melodyne. I'm just going to open the normal Melodyne for this video. It's going to open Safari. There it goes. They want me to update. I'm still on Melodyne 4. So I got my Melodyne open. I'm now going to scan this vocal take transfer it, I should say, into Melodyne. I'm gonna do that by just pushing this button and allowing it to play. It's that simple. We're the ones who will rise up again Cause we'll crawl our way out of the deep end A fire burning bright An eternal fight for our lives Because our pain will be the fuel to ignite now that should be in Melodyne, and there they are. Those are all of my words I was just yelling at the microphone. Let's go back to the beginning here. Okay. So I'm all zoomed in. I can see the words. We're ready to start clicking away. So if you're not familiar with Melodyne, um, or really what you're looking at, over here on the left is just basically like a piano scale. That's how you can think of it. These are your piano notes. The goal is to get this red squiggly line, which is the main vocal, in as much in the middle of these piano notes as possible. So kind of in a way, flatten them out. But the key to getting them to still sound natural is to not edit the beginning and the ends of the words. I don't want to tune the beginning of the word or like the end of a word, if it's the end of a line or specific parts, when we get to a word like that. But here in the beginning is a good example of what I mean. You can see this, the red squiggle line is the actual note. That is the note that is being sung 
the beginning of the word starts way down here and it shoots way up to the F sharp. Seems wild, but I actually don't want to touch that. I want it to do that because that is the natural scoop of the word getting to the note. We're the so if I tune that, it's going to sound weird. I don't want to tune that. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to select my note separation tool and I'm going to make cuts on the humps and the dips of the spots that I want to try to level out. So this is a big hump here, I, and this, this big hump, it's pretty sharp. It looks like it's getting almost to a G. It probably is hitting into a G slightly, or into that scale. So I'm going to make a cut here, and then I'm gonna select my pitch tool, and then I'm just gonna double click on that, and that's gonna bring that down to where I want it to be. And then I'm gonna go back to my note separation tool. I'm gonna do the same thing to this part here and this part here, pull it back down. Now I'm going to listen to it. We're the cool. This sounds pretty natural. I could tune it more if I want to. Uh, let's tune it a little bit more. Let's get rid of this little dip here. So I'm going to make a cut there. Can I make a cut close enough? Ooh, it might not let me make this cut close enough. Ooh, that might be my limit. Okay. So I got it close as I could get it. We'll just double click it. This might sound too robotic now. We're the yeah, that's getting a little too robotic. I'm going to leave that back to the way it was. I regretted that, which is okay. You can make mistakes. We're the All right, next word. I don't want to mess with this part of the word because this is the part of the word that's sliding up to the higher note. I want to leave this how it is because that's what's going to leave it sounding natural. So I'm going to make my cut right here because that looks like it's pretty much the bottom of it. And... Hmm, this one's a little tricky. This is the beginning of that word as well. We're the what? It is, it's a the, it's a very abrasive beginning of a word, I would say. Yeah, I'm going to make a cut there. That looks like a good spot. And then let's make another cut there. And then let's go to our tool here. And I'm going to, actually, I'm going to get a little weird. I'm going to highlight all of this. And then I'm going to go over here to this part. Uh, this is the part that uh, it's, it says pitch deviation in sense. <laughs> it told you what it was for me. I'm actually going to just bring it down a little bit so that this note right here is as in the middle as possible. I'm going to just eyeball it. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to tell me it's sense off, but I'm not looking at the same thing as that. Probably about there. So this should be, yeah, it didn't really move when I double clicked on it. Cool, that brought down the whole part, which allowed it to still have where the TH is right here, because this is the TH, the, the hump on the TH from the the, which is making it shoot up a little bit, it still has that in there, and then it still has the end of the word that scoops up, but it's more in key, and I didn't flatten it and make it sound robotic by doing this. We're the what? I made it a little more natural. We're the what? Probably very minimal, you know, difference, but it makes a pretty big difference when you're really getting down there. Oh, well, this is a raspy vocal. So this got a little weird. Raspy vocals will get a little weird on you like this, where they disappear. You don't have to panic. It looks scary. It's really not that scary. First thing I do whenever I see a raspy vocal like this, luckily this one doesn't have a lot of spots that have cut out. I'm going to get my note separation tool. And I'm going to make cuts where these empty spots are so that they don't get touched. And then I'm going to make a cut here at the beginning of the word. Because I don't know how much of this section I want to touch yet. I want it to sound very natural. We're the ones! But as you can tell, I go very sharp and it comes down. So I need to try to level all of that section out a little bit more. I'm going to start by just moving this up. And then seeing if that needs to change the ending of that now. We're the ones who no, this might be okay. Cool. And now I'm just going to highlight the very beginning of the word. And then I'm going to do the same thing like I did earlier. Where I'm going to go over to the, uh, this little thing over here. And I'm going to pull it down to where it looks just a little bit more flat. Again, I'm eyeballing here. And just going by my what my ear tells me sounds natural and good. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect. It already sounds fine now that I've flattened this part out. We're the ones who will... Wow, that actually sounded way better. That made a huge difference. <laughs> the ones who wow. I sound like a singer now. So moving forward, it looks like we got some 
this spot right here, I think this might just be an S or a noise like that. I don't think there's anything over here that actually needs tuned. Is that a note? Is am I saying a note there? Oh, oh well. I'm going to pull up my tool here. Either way, it looks like the red squiggly line stops there because it got a little raspy. So I'm going to put a cut there. I'm not going to worry about it right now. But the goal here is to get this line as flat as possible in the center of this F sharp. So, you know, this looks like it's getting really sharp right there. I'm just going to start making some cuts where I see my humps and my dips. So I'm going to cut there. There's an empty spot. I'm going to cut there. Um, big hump. Let's just cut that there. We're not going to probably even touch that. And then we'll divide this. I don't want to get too surgical here. I don't want to flatten it too much. We're just moving sections. Humps and dips. Cool. So now that I've got all those separated, but not separated too much, I'm going to start flattening some of these. I'm going to start by, let's double click this one and let's highlight these two. Cool. Um, do I want this to be perfectly flat? No. So this is the beginning of my W on the will. Um, it's the beginning of a word. Um, I don't want it to be perfect. I'm going to just do the thing again where I highlight it and I'm just going to pull it down slightly. The words you will write. Cool. Sounds better. Again, I'm not going to touch this. This looks like it's the beginning of a word. Will rise. Yeah, that's just a transition into it. So now I got the word rise here, which is very pitchy, and it looks like most of it disappeared because it's raspy. Will rise. So let's go over to our note separation tool. I'm going to make my cut there where it looks like the dip stops. And then I'm going to cut where the empty spots are. And then I'm going to cut it right here where that note looks like it starts to dip down. If it's going to let me drag it over. There we go. Cool. Then I'm going to go back to my pitch tool. And now I can... It looks like all I really need to do on this word... This part goes a little little below. And this part goes a little uh, sharp. So I only really need to mess with this one. So I'll probably just double click that one. Pull it down. Double click that one. Will rise. Not bad. Um, maybe double click that one. Cool. So far, it's working out pretty well. Will rise up. Okay, so you see here, this one goes pretty scoopy and then up. Probably looks, you're probably looking at that thinking, I don't know what the hell I do there. Well, never fear. We're going to click on our handy dandy uh, note separation tool. And we're going to cut the dips and humps. So I'm going to cut this one not at the bottom of it. I don't know, maybe I could. It doesn't have to be perfect. Let's just cut it there. We'll cut it there. And then we'll cut that one there. And I don't want to flatten this out completely to where it's like this. Um, it's probably not going to sound supernatural. It'll probably sound fine. Who knows? Rise up. It was okay. But I'm not going to do that because I'm a weirdo. I'm going to really make this sound really natural, but just tuned. I want it to sound like I'm the best singer and nobody tuned my voice. I don't want to sound like any robot in there. So now that I got these little cuts here, end rant, back to the work, I'm going to just kind of flatten them out a little bit. I'm not going to highlight them and do that. I'm going to do the thing where I click on the part I want to move, and I'm just going to move it down since with this. So I'm going to flatten it a little bit. And I'm going to go to this one, bring it in a little bit. It looks like I could even cut this hump a little more if I want to. I could put a cut there and then bring that down a hair if I really want. Um, Do will rise up uh yeah, cool. I'm happy with that. I don't need to touch the ending of the word right here either. It's perfect. Don't need to touch this part. This looks like it's the beginning of a word. So up uh yeah, that's the up. I don't want to touch that. That's going to stay where it is. The end of the word is going to stay where it is. So we're going to go to the note separation tool. Cut. Cut. So those aren't going to move. This thing swoops down. I don't want it to swoop that far. It shouldn't swoop that far. It should be more flat. So I'm going to put a big cut there. That uh, might be all I need to do. And we'll just double click there. We'll just flatten that one. And then that might be all it needs. We'll rise up. Uh yeah, that was perfect. All right. Double click that one. That one doesn't look too bad. We'll just move this part down. It looks like everything was pretty flat. Rise up again. Cool. That word sounds fine. 
I could probably cut some more here. It looks like a little dip there. A little dip there if I really wanted to flatten this part out. Leaving the beginning there. This part didn't need to be touched, but if I were to touch it, I would have cut it there and then made my move like that. Rise up again! Now we got a good flat vocal there. Touch that one. I personally wouldn't have made it that tuned sounding. I probably would have left this one a little more. Okay. So I'll just go back, but whatever. It's for the video. Okay, so now I got this long how that word. Okay. And boy, does that go up and down. So looks like on the gen right here, I go up. I scoop up, then back down into the word. So I don't want to mess with the scoop too much in the beginning. I want to leave that. I'm going to probably cut it here. And then I want to get rid of this dip. So I'm going to cut that there. This is pretty pitchy. This is honestly not great. I don't sing a lot. <laughs> so yeah, we definitely want to get this a little flatter. This is looking a little rough. Let's get it a cut there. And then it starts to sloop down there. So I'm going to do another cut. I'm just gonna cut wherever I see the dips. I'm just gonna cut this one on the dips. Cut it you there. Now that we got those divided into sections, I can highlight, straighten those out, and that should be money. Rise up again, cause we'll cool. Um, now we have these words, which it's almost hard to tell where they're trying to even hit. Cause we'll they're supposed to be the same note. They're supposed to both be an F sharp. So I'm going to, this word doesn't look too bad. I'm going to do what I just did before I undid it. And I'm going to click on my pitch tool. And I'm just going to double click this one, pull it down to the F sharp because I know that's where it needs to be. I probably don't even need to do much to that word. This one though dips down lower than what it's supposed to. That's not even hitting the note. I didn't do my job. Cause we'll cry. So we are gonna cut this dip and move this dip up. And we're gonna do that without messing with the beginning of the word. And I'm gonna to try to not mess with the ending as much as possible. So I'm gonna cut it here, I'm gonna cut it there. And actually let's get one more cut there. We're gonna get really surgical here. Now I'm gonna to go to my, um, does it matter what tool I have selected for? The, oh, I can, can I move? The, nope, okay. So yeah, I have to go to my pitch tool to do the scent change. So I'm gonna to go to my pitch tool. I'm gonna to highlight these three little ones I cut because these are the ones I'm gonna move. And I'm gonna do the thing where I slide it up and I'm gonna get it up as much as I can. I don't wanna move that one up any higher. Let's just move this up. So if you notice what I did was I moved up all the little, all the parts a little bit at a time. So basically what I did was, I don't know. Okay, let's just hear what that sounds like. Guys will cry. Hmm. Guys will cry. Uh, that's still be tuned a little tighter. We're going to bring this beginning of the word down a little bit more. We're going to get a little drastic and make some more cuts here. Because now that I'm moving these more drastically, you notice it's dipping down and then back up. It's going to start making jaggedy lines. I don't want a lot of those jaggedy lines. I want to try to soften those. So I'm going to be making cuts to try to straighten those lines out. So let's see if we can get one more cut. I don't think it's going to even let me get another cut in there. Uh, about right there. Cool. That's about all I can get in there. I cut you right here. Can I do it? <laughs> no. Great. Cool. So, but what I can do, it seems to work better, is I'm going to move that line right there. That lets me edit the part I want to edit. Why? Why are you playing? That scared me. All right, so I want to flatten this word a little bit more, but do it naturally. Let's move this part. Um, let's move this up a little bit so that that line matches that part right there. And then we're going to highlight these three, and we're going to move them down a little bit. Move these two down a little bit more. It looks like that's getting real jaggedy, though. Getting a little nervous. Cause we'll Not bad. Let's fix these jaggedy parts. We don't want it to look so jagged. Let's go to here. I'm going to go to pitch modulation tool and I'm going to highlight these first couple ones that I want to change the pitch modulation of. So I'm going to highlight them. I'm going to go to the ending of, is it that tool or is it this tool? It's this tool, right? Oh no, no, sorry. It's just the pitch tool. I'm an idiot. 
just the pitch tool, the tool I've been using the whole time. Make sure you have the pitch tool on. Uh, highlight the part, um, the little blocks that I want to move, uh, which is just these ones, or not move. I want to adjust the little red squiggly lines on them. So then I'm going to go to the ending of the last highlighted little red block right here. And then I'm going to click hold down and I'm just going to start moving it up. And as you can see what it's doing, as you can see what it's doing, it's softening that red squiggly line when you pull it up and down. When I pull it up all the way, it makes it very smooth. When I pull it down, it makes it very um, jagged, which I don't want. So I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to smooth that out, making it as natural as possible. Now it's beautiful. It flows. It's going to sound great. And guys will cry. It was awesome. Great. Next word. Being of the word, again, don't uh, don't touch it. Just leave it alone. We're just gonna make cuts like that, and then we're just gonna do this, and then we're gonna listen. Guys will cry lower. Cool. Being of that word could be fixed a little bit more, probably. Let's try doing what we did earlier and just moving it down in sections. So make a couple cuts, break it up so it's not one continuous piece. Man. Okay. I'm gonna pick my uh, pitch tool, and let's bring it down just a little bit. That one looks like it is on pitch. So now I'm not gonna bring that one down. Now I'm gonna move over and bring these ones down a little bit. Cool. And this red squiggly line looks pretty fluid. I don't need to use the little handy dandy select and then this thingy for these. Oh, bummer. I could, it wouldn't hurt. It'd probably make them sound better, but. Yeah, I did it either way. I didn't have to. You can. Guys will cry love. That one looked fine. I didn't have to specifically for that one, I should say. That does sound great, though. And guys will cry love out of the deep. Cool. Ooh, that deep was real pitchy. Let's just jump over to that deep real quick. <laughs> That's a good one. The deep. All right, so this deep looks a little funky, too. So this will be fun. So it's supposed to be an A. It's clearly almost a G sharp in some form and almost an A sharp does get into that. Too. Oh, it does pretty much hit almost A sharp. So, but that's okay. I don't want to mess with this part at the end. If I mess with this part, it's probably going to sound weird. I've said that so many times in this video. Now, first glance, there is a large hump on the side. It looks like it's kind of tilting down like this, the whole take. So I could just get one cut there and then move these two, and they should be already better. Out of the deep end. Yeah, significantly better, and then uh, still sounds a little iffy. The deep. I want it to sound better than that, so let's flatten that even more. So we'll cut the humps and the dips. So cut that hump, cut that dip, and then now we highlight and flatten those up. Out of the deep end. Cool, sounds great. Sounds great, and I could do this if I want to, or I could leave it because they look fine. I'm just gonna start doing it because I feel like it's cool to do it now. The deep end. Wow, did it make a difference on that? Have I been doing it wrong all these years? The deep end. Yeah, sounds exactly. Same. Okay. Bad. That one is fine. Nothing to really show you there. A fire. Burn. That's a good word. The too. deep end. A fire All right, so let's tune these parts. These move pretty drastically. So this is the word, I believe, fire. Fire. Yeah. So it's being F sharp. It's clearly not an F sharp. I guess parts of it are. This part looks like it's pretty in key. So I'm going to make my cut there on this hump. Let's just double click that. Oh, it was a little flat, actually. Cool. Go back to my separation tool. Let's get a good cut right there, possibly. And let's pull this one up to there. That should be fine, honestly. And a fire. Yeah, that was fine. Fire, I might be able to just double click it and it might be fine. And a fire. Oh, I think it's the wrong note, actually. There it is. And a fire burning bright. I did miss some words, I'm aware, but. I kind of wanted to jump to ones that seemed more important. Oh, I shouldn't edit without telling you what I'm doing, but. Here we go. Oh, God, I messed that up. Okay, see, I made a mistake. I went too far. 
So I got my cuts. Let's start small here. I don't want it to be too robotic. Highlight those. Cool. Highlight that one. Cool. We're just going to slide these down. That's all I need for that one. Next word, give it a double click. Put it on key. See where it's sitting. Looks like there's a dip in the middle. Big, long dip. And then a dip down here. So I'm going to cut it there. I don't want to mess with this part. I could cut it there if I want to. Um, and then we'll flatten those, and that should be pretty good. Burning bright! Yeah, those are sounding great. Right? Um, this word right here, bright, it... Burning bright! It has a big drop at the end. So we definitely don't want to touch the drop. That's very important. So I'm going to make my cut here. Let's make a cut there, and then make a cut there. Just to try to divide this long slope up a little bit. And when I'm making those cuts, what I'm really looking at is specifically on this one, it was, I, I made the, one of the cuts right where the red line kind of plateaued. Seems like a good spot to make a surgical cut to be able to easily move it and still have the lines be close enough if I do a lot of crazy tuning. And then I just threw in a next run there just because I'm, like I said, I want to get a couple cuts in here so I can have more control of how to move this part. And then I'll cut that there. This is very sharp. You know what? We're going to get another one in there. Because this is a very long slope. I don't want it to be so long. So let's just tune down the beginning. Oh, this one looks a little... Might not need to touch the ending. Might be okay. Burning bright! Okay. That was fine. Any that, no, that word was a little bad. So that one gets very dippy. Any so we're gonna cut it right there, cut that dip, cut the ending, and then bring up this middle. And I might need to do a little bit more work than that. Right. Yeah, it's, it's a little weird, little weird. I might need to get some more cuts in there. Maybe a cut down at where it actually plateaus right there and then starts to scoop up and then one in the middle. Oh, I can't get any more there. We'll get another cut there then. That gives me a little bit more control. Well, let's see. There we go. That'll give me the most control. A nice three-point cut. I don't know. I made that up. There, I don't have a rule to that or a name. <laughs> Just cut it. Cut the dips. Cut the dips and humps. Now that I got these cut, I should be able to flatten this out much easier. Can I do it? Uh, let's pull that up. Let's uh, highlight these. Pull these up a little bit. Now I've gotten it closer. This is already in key. Let's just move that up. Cool. Any cool. I think now at this point, I probably could just highlight these and have my pitch tool selected and then do the handy dandy, uh, whatever this is called. Any cool. Yeah. Uh, that one I can just double click. I think it's fine. Any turn off. Very pitchy on this one. So again, cut there, cut there. We cut the dips. And then I'm going to highlight those. And then, uh, hmm, do I want that to go up all the way? That might sound a little robotic there. And eternal fight! No, that was fine. Okay, so this word kind of scoops down. So I want to cut it here where it looks like this one spot kind of starts to level out a little bit. I'm going to cut it there. And then I'm just going to cut it like kind of somewhere around there. I might need to cut a couple more in there. Let's get this ending on key first. Okay, so I don't like how this is doing that. So to fix that, I can just put another cut there, put that on key. And then that actually might be fine. An eternal fight! Yeah, cool. Perfect. That was an easy one. Fight looks fun. An eternal fight! F cut the dips. There's a little dip here I don't like. I don't like how this looks. And then I, there, okay. So then we'll flatten those parts. Turn off I fall. Then I'm not going to touch the ending because it's clearly dropping down on purpose. Or I lie. Okay, cut the middle. Leave those endings there. And then we'll just fix this beginning because it looks like these parts were fine. I for our lives. This is a strange word. I for our lives. Okay, so right here, what am I trying to do? I think it's supposed to be an E is my guess. 
So I'm going to start by cutting this big dip that clearly needs to be moved the most. Um, we'll cut it there, because that looks like the beginning of that. We'll get one more cut in here. There we go. Nice three-point cut. See, it's becoming a thing. Three-point cut. Here we go. We got my three-point cut. And we are going to try to get this on key. Uh, I think it's supposed to be an E. Is it? Uh, I don't even remember what this part is. Right, an eternal fight for our life. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be an E. Okay. So. No fight for our life. I'm just going to pull that up there. It sounded fine. I don't think I really needed to get crazy on that. Um, turn a fight for our lives. Cool. That was actually a pretty easy one. So for good measure, let's do the highlight, pitch tool, and then this thing because it's been pretty cool so far. Turn a fight for our lives because of... And this one, I'm not going to fuck with that. Bam. Because our for our lives. Because our. Okay, so this B gets a little wild. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be the note D. So I can cut it there. And then for this, I'm actually going to highlight this whole thing and I'm going to bring it down with the sense uh, pitch thing. And I'm just going to eyeball it because it's going to tell me it's negative 29, but that's because I think it's considering something else. I'm looking at something different than that thing. I'm trying to get this in key with this in the center, which I think I just did. Because I yes, I did. Cool. Don't even have to get any crazier with that one. That can be left alone. Because I this part seems wild. We get a good cut there. I think this is just a little sharp. So I'm going to do the same thing. Highlight, pull it down. I don't want to mess with it too much. Double click it once it's close, get it perfect. Double click that one, get it perfect. For our lives, because our pain will be. I don't even know where this note is because it's all raspy. Our pain will be. I for our lives, because our pain will be. Actually, sounds in key. There's not enough raspy vocals in this chorus to really. Our lives, because our. I'm gonna leave that raspy vocal. That'll be another day. Cool. What is this word? Pain will pain. That's pretty bad. What note is that supposed to be? Oh well, it doesn't matter. Let's make our cut. There's this extreme dip, which is not supposed to be dipping that way. So we cut the dip, cut the end, cut the beginning. We got our cuts. We got our three point cut, baby. One, two, three. One, two, three. Uh, what note are you supposed to be? Zar pain will. All right. So. This, actually, the middle of the word was supposed to be the note, the E. So I'm going to double-click that one, get it perfectly pitch, and then I'm going to highlight the others. I'm going to highlight everything else that's part of this word. I'm going to move the whole thing together because doing that is going to leave it sounding more natural. Because our pain will be... Cool. I think I can just double-click this B and get it on. Our pain will be the... Yeah, that sounds great. A fuel to... Cool. So will be the field. This isn't really hitting much of a note. It's supposed to be. I think something like this. What I would probably do. Pain will be the field. It is a little flat because I, I I know because I wrote the song. This note is supposed to be the same note as this this note, which is E. So it is going flat. So because I know that, I'm going to highlight this thing and just bring it up a little bit and just pretty much until it sounds fine. Pain will be the fuel to... That sounded fine. I don't think I need to get wild. If I want to get wild with this, we'll get wild for the video. You know what? Let's do it. This tool, what was it called? Uh, note separation. Click on it. Pull it up. It's your best friend. We're going to make our cut there, and we're going to make our cut there. We're going to make our cut there and the reason why i did those cuts was i would hope by this part in the video you would understand that we're cutting the dips and the humps because i've said it a lot and then i cut this part because which i didn't go into many times in this video it was a raspy vocal so the vocal kind of cut out uh, melody doesn't pick up raspy vocals very well so i cut that um, because sometimes moving the raspy vocals get weird so now that i got those cuts i need to bring these up here 
like that. That might be okay. Because our pain will be the fuel to. Yeah, cool, that worked. Our pain will be the fuel to. I'll probably bring that down a little bit. You know what? Let's fix the end of this word. We're going to go against everything I just taught you guys. I lied. No. Pain will be the fuel to. Cool. Fix fuel. Fuel has a dip in the middle. Cut that dip. Cut the ending. This is going to be more than a three-point cut. Oh, we're getting into four-point cut territory on this, this one. Four-point word. Cool. So I got my cuts. And basically, to break down those cuts, what I did, um, again, we got the dips. I cut the big dip. I always look at the big dips first, the ones that catch my eye. And then I got this last dip, which it's a line that goes diagonal. I don't want it to go diagonal, so I'm going to give it a cut there. And I give it a cut there because that's where the tall dip looks like it starts to get less dippy and flatter. So now that I got those cut, this, again, this word is supposed to be the an E. So I know that I'm going to double click on this middle, get the middle and in key as much as I can. Probably double click that word too. And then I'm going to just highlight the rest and I'm going to pull them down just a little bit with the pitch tool just to kind of level it out. Will be the fuel to ignite. Cool. Let's fix that ignite. So we're going to get a cut there at the end. Pretty big dip. I'll cut that dip. This goes pretty far. Pretty, pretty wide dip. Then we'll get a cut at the beginning there. Cool, we got our cuts, highlight. I wanna bring this down. I don't wanna do this necessarily because then it's gonna create that weird thing right there. So I'm gonna highlight those and I'm gonna pull them down evenly like that. Feel to ignite. And then I'm gonna double click that one. Looks like this got raspy, which threw it in a weird spot. Ignite. Which is fine, it should still work though. It just brings it down here instead. This looks like it goes a little swoopy down. We don't want to swoopy down. So I'm gonna get my cut. Let's get a cut there, there, because that's kind of the end-ish. I'm not gonna mess with the end-ish of the word. And there, that should be enough cuts to get it in key. Actually, that moved it a lot. I didn't like how much this moved away from that. So I'm going to highlight those and then pull it down and then double click these just to make sure, okay. Those are still pretty far. Okay, let's do this. We're gonna double click that one, highlight these two together, pull them down until they look like they're in key with this one. Then I can double click it if I want, but it got it much closer. Now I don't have that weird gap there. This big long thing should be okay. Ignite! Yeah, that was cool. It worked, and this is just a little sharp. This is the end of the word. I don't need to get wild there. I could probably just leave that. Ignite! Cool. I know I missed some random words in the middle, but now that I got that all tuned, and let's say I listened to it and I liked it, which I don't want to hear myself anymore singing, next step would be close out of the Melodyne, and uh, you want to commit that Melodyne to this track in however way your DAW can do it, whether you have like an export in place or like a bounce in place. Logic has a nice bounce in place that I like to use, so I just... I select the track that I want it to export it into, which I want it to put it into this main vocal. And then I'm just going to right click on the vocal track that I want to bounce in place. Then I'm going to go down to bounce and join and click bounce in place. Select a track. I can rename it. I don't really want to, but I will. Let's name it hi. Hello. Okay. Cool. Cool. And then that, oh. Well, I had the volume turned up, so it, it did that with the volume turned up, made it louder. So I'm going to redo that. It is not called high anymore, though, so that's kind of a bummer. So now I got this uh, muted vocal. I'm going to mute this one so we don't hear that melody. Let's hear this track. I know I did miss some words in the beginning, or in the middle somewhere, so there will be some untuned words, but here we go. We're the ones who Let's turn the song on. We're the ones who will rise up again Cause we'll crawl our way out of the deep end A fire burning bright An eternal fight for our lives Because our pain will be the fuel to ignite 
And now we have a tuned vocal minus the couple words in the middle I skipped. <laughs> it sounds great. Sounds so much better now. It sounds tuned. Doesn't sound overly tuned. Sounds good. Just sounds like a good, good, clean, good, well sung vocal now. We're the ones who will rise up again. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you liked the video. Hope it was helpful. I can subscribe to my channel. And thank you. Goodbye.